American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's Alex Bennett, and it is the Ramble. We go until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, and we'll talk to our citizens panel in just a little bit. Last night, we tried to play our interview with Larry Bubbles Brown, and the problem that we had with it was is that I, uh, I had all kinds of problems with my uh, Internet connection, okay? So uh, we thought we would just, well, you know, try it again tonight. So once again, let's talk to Bubs. Ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry. What's your last name? I think it's Brown. <laughs> Brown. Is there a middle? There's so many aliases is, before. Is, is there a middle name there? Uh, no middle initial. No middle initial, huh? But, but there, there is a nickname, and we like there to call Bubbles. we like to call him Bubbles because he's so effervescent, right? Yeah. Now, who named you that again? I keep forgetting. Paula Poundstone. Paula Poundstone named you Larry Bubbles Brown. And it stuck. It like stuck. A, uh, now, did it, it stick? like with, did, chewing gum in your hair. Did it stick because you kept using it or because... Uh, no, I never liked it, but other people kept using it. Oh, so everybody thought it was funny to call you Bubbles. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... And now, and now it's just like when we're in pri- even private conversation, uh, I refer to you as Bubs. Oh, yeah, most people call me that, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I make a file out of these interviews, and uh, the file uh, starts uh, is named Bubs. So, you know, <laughs> that's the way it, the way it goes. Uh, have you, uh, did, did you ever think of the Larry, Larry Brown, Lawrence Brown, is your real name, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you ever, when you got into show business, think about changing it? Uh, no. I thought the, the Larry Brown certainly sounds like a uh, short enough name. So. It sounds like you're black. Kind of, kind of, yeah, because it sounds kind of, uh, sounds kind of uh, boring, actually. <laughs> Uh, it, well, it, Although, it, it's simple. It's simple, and I—I I, I mean, if I was named Larry Brown, I wouldn't change it. But my name is Bennett Schwarzman, and do you think I'm going to use that for show business? Bennett Schwarzman. <laughs> now you know what's interesting is I, 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 as soon as it came time to enter show business, it was—it was almost like a bar mitzvah. You, you, you had the ritual of picking what your name was going to be. Sometimes people would change their names. Uh, even though they didn't need to change their names because their real names were fine. But they felt, I'm going into show business, so to feel like I'm in show business, I better come up with a show business name. Um, Like, I have this friend uh, named Irv Jackson, and he does a a show here on on, Sirius. Here on... (laughs) God, I'm I'm going back. Uh, uh, He... he, uh, uh, it goes uh, uh, under the name Irv Jackson on the air. Now, why he didn't keep his original name? And, uh, no, he doesn't use Irv Jackson. That's his real name. He goes by the name Jack Bishop. Now, why would you go from Irv Jackson to Jack Bishop? I often wondered that. So, uh, you know, I never could figure that out. Uh, uh, in my case, I- what? I have here in my uh, in my uh, almanac the original names of selected entertainers. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll, okay, we'll get to that in a second. But what I was just going to say is uh, with Bennett Schwarzman, uh, I figured I'd better change it, okay, because nobody would spell it right to begin with. It's S-C-H-W-A-R-Z-M-A-N-N. They usually spell it with, one T, with a T in it and no N, okay, one N. So um, uh, I changed it to Alex Bennett. Uh, Alex was my father's first name, and Bennett was my first name. So that was, it worked out. Okay. So I feel Schwartzman's would have been a great name for a deli. Schwartzman's would have been a great name for a deli. Exactly. Yeah. But then I said, "Who's gonna? You know, I'm never gonna get famous having a name like Bennett Schwartzman." And uh, uh, along comes Schwartzenegger. 
you know. So, I mean, you never can tell. But um, uh, Larry Brown is, you know, as good a name as you're going to come up with. Uh, but what, what were you going to say? You're going to come up with real names of people. You see, you have well, I have I have the original names here of selected entertainers, and one one is very close to your uh, name. Okay, well, give Tony, me give me their real names, and I'll try Tony and Tony Curtis. Well, they do you know his real name? Uh, yeah, his uh, uh, Schwartz. Bernard Schwartz. Bernard Schwartz. Yeah, give me the names. Give me the. You the, want me to give you the real names? Real you names. Guess the entertainer. Me, yeah, let me try and guess the entertainer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Alan Alan Kana, Konisberg. That's Jack Benny. Uh, Woody Allen. Oh, Woody Allen. Why I think it was Jack Benny. He's Benjamin Kabelski. Uh, let me see. You're right, Benjamin yeah. Kabelski. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you've had him on your show, Chan Kwong Sung. Would that be Jackie Chan? That's Jackie Chan. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Frederick Austerlitz. Frederick Austerlitz. I know this. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. God, why is it? it? Are either of those names similar to his real name? Uh, to the Very show, similar. show business name, rather? Yes. First name again is what? Frederick Austerlitz. So it would be Fred somebody. Fred Allen? Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh... Patsy McClenney. You'll never get this one. Huh? You'll never Patsy McClenney. Uh, I have no idea. Morgan Fairchild. Okay, <laughs> well, this is the one we talked about last week. Jacob Jacob Cohen. Jacob Cohen. Well, it, 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 probably his first name he used was Jack, right? No. No? Hmm. Comedian. Say the name again. Jacob Cohen. Jacob Cohen. God, I don't know. Roddy Dangerfield. I see here. Here's an area where I'm a total idiot. All right. <laughs> I it, go, keep going. Keep going with the real names. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, this is a very famous actor, uh, younger than us, but not a whole lot. Thomas. Map, Maphother, M A P O T H E R. Thomas Maphother. I don't know Tom Cruise. You got it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Daniel Michael. Now there, there's a name. Why would you change your name from Daniel Michael? Why, That's a pretty good name. It's a pretty good name. He changed it to. Uh, I have no idea. Danny DeVito. See, why would you go from that to Danny DeVito? Where, 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 what's the thinking on that? You've got a name that's perfectly usable, and you go to a name that's less usable. Maybe you wanted a name that was just distinctive, because I don't. Do you know any other DeVitos in this world? <laughs> I can't think of any. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Wow. Archibald Leach. Oh, that's of Cary Grant. Yes. Uh, and he, he many times, when people would talk to him and he would know them, they would refer to him as Archie. He he thought of Cary Grant as this character he played on film and Archibald Leach is who he was, you know. Which I've kind of, I've kind of um, um, separated uh, Bennett Schwarzman from uh, Alex Bennett. You know, uh, and and I don't know the reason why I have, but uh, if somebody calls me Ben, I I react differently. You know, uh, if you call me Alex, I I act in a, a in in the Alex Bennett way. Very strange, very strange. What happens when you have a separate name? Okay, all right. Some more. You got any more? Uh, let's. 
David Robert Jones. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 all my phones are deciding to ring at the same time. I can tell. Uh, let me, uh, let me decline here. Uh, did you hear that? That was my wife trying to call me. Usually I move all my phones into the other room, but I guess today... Uh, that I, was a cacophony. It, it was an absolute cacophony of, of phones <laughs> ringing, and she'll probably try me <laughs> again. Cacophony. You know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, yes, that was Marjorie Miller, which, by the way, her real name is Marjorie Miller. Actually, her real her, her real name would be Marjorie Schwarzman, but in this day and age, you just don't take your husband's name anymore. You know, it's just not considered in. So. That's part of the evil patriarchy. Yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, anyway, where, where were we? Oh yes, names of famous people who I have. I'm, you know, usually I get a lot of stuff right when you ask me on certain subject matters. Um, what's the one I? What's the game we always play and I get it right most of the time? Uh, oh, the um, yeah. What the hell is it? Yeah, but but these I'm I'm terrible on. You know. Um, but um, anyway, so I, you know, I, I, I changed my name immediately. I knew I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna have a career when I started out being Bennett Schwarzman. Hey, it's the Ben Schwarzman show. Hi. You know, maybe I'll start doing that. Maybe I'll change this to the Ben Schwarzman show. That'd be good. Yeah. Well, um, this is a name that had to be changed. Albert Einstein. Well, that was Albert Brooks. Right. Uh, and his brother is Bob Einstein, who is Officer, Ju Officer Judy. I think he's dead now, isn't he? Yeah, he died. Recently. He died this past year, I think. Yeah, yeah. But uh, And I guess you would. If I, my name were Albert Einstein and I were going into show business, I would change it to something <laughs> else, too. I mean, and his father, his father was, um, uh, oh, what was it? his father... I'm trying to remember what his real name was. Uh, it wasn't Bob Einstein. It wasn't Al. It might have been Al Einstein. But he was on the radio as a comedian called Parkia Carcass. Uh, and uh, so uh, those two guys come from a showbiz family. And oh, and uh, Einstein, their father, is famous, very famous for something. Uh, I think he does. <laughs> He, uh, some comics die on stage, and he literally did. He died doing a roast, and I can't. The roast was for Milton Berle, and uh, he um, um, he literally died uh, on stage. He he just uh, I don't know. He didn't did he keel over or whatever. But all of a sudden, it, they thought it was a joke, and everybody started laughing. Oh no no, that was Dick Sean. Who, when he died on stage, he just dropped to the floor, and the audience yeah, started. Yeah, they thought it was a bit, and uh, they waited like five minutes before somebody did anything. Yeah, and by then he was truly dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, but but but, but uh, literally, Albert Brooks's father died at a Friars Club roast, and uh, right, it, it, and and I, I wonder if the roast kept going after <laughs> after they all <laughs> went away. <laughs> Show must go on. Oh boy, you know, you know. It's funny in show business. If you took a show business name like I'm Alex Bennett, supposedly, at least so far as after is concerned, no one else can use that name. You know, so if your name, is, so we've had cases where there was an actor by the name of Stuart Granger. You know what his real name was? Uh. See if it's here. Yeah, I do. Well, I do know now. I just thought. Go ahead and tell them. A James Stewart. Yeah, he couldn't use the name James Stewart because it was already taken by a, a certain actor by the name of James Stewart. So you and had that, you had to change your name, so he became Stuart Granger. And supposedly that was done by the Screen Actors Guild, so that wouldn't uh, he, they wouldn't uh, misdirect residual checks. Oh, is that the reason why? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, is that the reason I keep getting residual checks for <laughs> Bennett Schwarzman? Uh, eh, forget it. I, I, it. I'm down to the point in my life where I get residual checks for seven dollars. Oh, I've gotten smaller than that. So. Really? Yeah. Remember, there was an episode of Seinfeld where he was getting residual checks from Japan for three dollars a check. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he had like a hundred checks, and he was getting writers' cramp endorsing them so he could cash them. Uh huh. Yeah, but my my uh, my business manager every now and then says, "Oh, guess what? You're a rich man." I go, "Why?" He says, "You just got another residual check from after. How much?" And he says, seven dollars." You know, it's all these HBO one night stands that keep running. I mean, how many years? Yeah, ago, that's where you're getting this from. Okay. How many years ago did I do uh, HBO's One Night Stand as the uh -huh. host? God, that was what? Ninety nine six. I think that was in the eighties. If I'm not uh, when I first got to San Francisco, about five years in or something, I started hosting those those shows. Well, you did them for quite a while. Yeah, I did them for uh, five seasons. And then the sixth season, they got an actress to play me uh, named Whoopi Goldberg. So uh, I often say, yes, Whoopi Goldberg played me on uh, One Night Stand. Or, excuse me, was it One Night Stand? What, was it? what were the name of those shows? That was HBO's One Night Stand. The ones on, uh, uh, what were the ones on uh, PBS? That I did. God, that was, that was comedy tonight. Comedy tonight, right? So I still I, and I still get residual checks for comedy tonight. Really? And Where's that being shown? And occasionally, I don't know. Uh, the, either the, you know, maybe they uh, use something out of them or something. But then I, but I still do get residual checks for one night stand. Not all. I only did one season. I only did like I think there were. Ten episodes, and I did nine. So, um, and most of those don't get shown, but like the one for Bill Maher is still up on HBO. You know, and there are a couple of others I think that are still up there, and that's what I get the residual checks for. So, it's really, really nice that I, you know, and they're Thank all. God, we can live off those. Yeah, they're all made out to Bennett Schwarzman. So. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, but it, but it used to be that that you if you no two people could have the same name in in AFTRA and in uh, in SAG and whatever. Um, that's why sometimes if somebody had a real name and they wanted to use like let's say the name was James Stewart, they change they use James and they use whatever their middle name was and then Stewart and right. then they could do it, you know. Um, but. Um, Anyway, but uh, yeah, Woody Allen changed his name. Yeah, he wouldn't. Would Woody Allen have made it as Konigsberg? Probably not. Yeah. Maybe Woody Konigsberg. He might have made it. But Woody Konigsberg. Here's a, maybe. Here's a guy. Uh, his real name is Michael Douglas, and he changed it to. Oh boy. You got me on that one. Michael Keaton. Oh really? See. Yeah. See, folks, see what we're saying? He had to change it, right? Because he couldn't call himself Woody Allen. There already was a Woody Allen. Reginald he, Dwight. Reginald Dwight. No, I know that one. Reginald Dwight. English singer. Singer. Uh, 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 that wasn't Tom Jones, was it? No, Tom Jones was Thomas Woodward. Oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Give me the name again. Uh, Reginald Dwight. Reginald Dwight, singer. God, I know the name, and I can't. I can't remember who the guy was. Elton John. Elton John, of course, of course. Oh boy. And the great Eric Weiss. That's Houdini. No, oh, you got that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Houdini obviously could not be his real name. Come on. <laughs> Actually, he stole Houdini, he stole the name Houdini from a magician, uh, uh, I think maybe who was dead by the time he started doing magic, but he was a great magician called Houdin. 
which was like H H O U D I N, and then he added the I to it and called himself Houdini. So, you know, um, and um, every year after his death, his wife would hold a séance, trying to reach uh, Houdini, Eric Weiss. Uh, because when he before he died, he made a pact with her that if I ever die, I wanted. They went around dispro- disproving, you know, psychics and mystics who can talk to the dead and so on, and they constantly went around debunking them and finding the various ways they were doing all the sounds and the noises and so on. And he said, "If I if it's possible to speak to you from the dead, I will try." And so every year on the anniversary of his birthday, uh, I think his birthday, not his death day, but on his birthday, they would hold a seance and try and reach him. And she never did, disproving that people could contact you from the dead because he made a vow that if he could, he would. And uh, she used to hold a, uh, literally hold a seance once every year until her death, trying to reach him. Uh, because it was her vow to him that she would try. So, isn't that interesting? Yeah, didn't know that. I guess they, they never and they never connected. They never connected. Well, maybe they did later on when she died. You know, um, who, who knows what happens after death? I don't think anything. That's what bothers me. Uh, I wish I had a belief. I often have, have said that I wish I were one of these people who firmly believed in uh, in uh, in the afterlife because then the idea of death wouldn't scare me oh i'm going to go see aunt sadie you know goodbye see you later and die um, that's probably how that's probably why religions popped up isn't it because people were so afraid there's going to be something after well, this well my fear of death is almost uh, crippling i mean like you know i've got this thing where i'm dealing with uh, the fact that i probably have uh, prostate cancer all right uh but which is not you know it, it, at one time it used to be i guess fairly deadly but now for the most part 92 percent of the people who get it they uh, it's so low that they don't even uh, they only keep an eye on it that's it you know yeah, something else is going to kill you. And something else is going to kill you, which may, yeah, that's a wonderful thought that they that they propound, <laughs> propose, is that, well, you know, the fact is that at your age, your life expectancy is only about 10 years. And so uh, if you had a cancer starting now, it wouldn't kill you. Something else will kill you. And I'm going, oh, thanks. That's nice to know. That I'm I'm at that point where it doesn't matter whether I have prostate cancer. That it's usually so slow growing that if eventually it gets to the point where it could get me, or get complicated, I'm going to be dead anyway. Thank you very much. Right? That that really gives me a lot of solace. <laughs> I would like to know that I they found cancer when I was 30 and went. We better take care of this right now. <laughs> you know. So, anyway, yeah. They, they don't even give process. They usually don't give a PSA test uh, to anybody over the age of seventy-five. And my doctors have been giving them to me still. And I went, "Come on, you know what's this all about?" So eventually, they found that something was happening. All right. Well, uh, it, it's it's really it's it's amazing. So I'm going for an alternative opinion uh, in a day or so. You gotta get the second. By the time this is heard, it will have already happened. And I'm probably dying of prostate cancer. So. <laughs> You'll have a big announcement next time. Oh, at my age, you know, there's a 70% chance of prostate cancer. And if I reach 90, here's happy news for you. It's 100%. So, you know, God, why did they give me that fucking organ in the first place? You know, to begin with, it's given me nothing but trouble even just in the women I've had to meet to relieve it, you know? <laughs> so The human body is a very, uh, was not a good design. There, there are some, uh, I, when people say, is there a God? I said, no, because if there was a God, he wouldn't have put the prostate in a place where the urethra goes right through the prostate. 
And then when it expands as you get old, you have trouble peeing. He mm -hmm. would have, God, if he were in his infinite wisdom, would have taken that prostate and moved it over to the side. Right? My proof if exactly he, that If he's is. omnipotent, yes, he would have uh, known that. Yes. And uh, 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 instead, you just become impotent. Uh, you know, but, uh, eh, well, you know. What the hell? They, uh, the good news is, uh, the bad news is I might have prostate cancer. The good news is I've lived long enough to get it. You know? <laughs> That's true. So uh, what, what have you. Hey, listen, Larry, we've, we've come to the end of yet another st stimulating time here. Stimulating. Uh, <laughs> as you hit the almanac and we get some information on people who have, uh, who have uh, uh, had different names. Always good talking to you, Larry. You too, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I always love Larry Bubbles Brown because I love having uh, time with him uh, to uh, have him quiz me on stuff. And uh, he always comes. He always comes prepared, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well, look at this! Look at that! Look at that! I did this last night, and uh, I didn't put the hat on. And uh, I kind of like the way it looks, you know. I kind of look, uh, kind of look, kind of, I kind of look. Um, I don't know. What do I look like? I don't know. I look like shit, actually. Look, that interview we did, by the way, we did before I was going to have my. Um, my prostate biopsy, which I then didn't have because I found another doctor. <laughs> Not one who would necessarily agree that I don't need a prostate biopsy, but he wasn't so fast to do one. Okay, and so he's my new guy. Let me see here. Let me uh, start the uh, Skype. Let's see. Is that working? It looks like it's working. Let me then... Uh, uh, make myself active so people can see that I uh, I have uh, Skype going, and um, if you want to call us, uh, we use a thing called Skype. And if you don't have it, go over to gabnet.net, and over on the right hand side of the page is a whole tutorial on how you can get Skype and how you can call us and how you can be part of the citizen panel, which would make you a TV star. Isn't that good? Uh, yeah. Should I put the hat on? Should I leave it off? Uh, let me know. Uh, we have a chat line over here, which uh, you can you can tell me whether you think I I should do it this way or not do it this way. Ah, uh, look, Charlie Wallace is calling, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me see here if I can get Charlie into my citizen panel. I think he should pop up because he was one of the first people that called last night. Are you there, Charlie? Charlie, are you there? Are you there? Are you there, Charlie? I'm here. Oh, okay. Uh, turn on your camera. There we go. Uh, let's see here. Where where were you last night? I wonder if you were in the. Uh, and I just brought up. Uh, uh, I just brought up uh, Phil. Okay. Wait a minute. What? Somebody's making noise there. Uh, let me see here. Josh Wheeler. I think he was up last night in the first place. There he we go. He was number one. Yeah, yeah, you're you're very you're something wrong. You're a little loud, uh, uh, Charlie. And let me uh, let me get Charlie on here. Put him in the uh, Charles Wallace. There we go. And I think now I can do this, and uh, people can see uh, the beginning of a citizen panel. There's uh, Josh Wheeler, and there's Phil Meyer, and there is uh, Charlie Wallace. So how do you like my? How do you like me without a cap, or without a hat, or cap, or whatever? Uh, who's that guy that you look like now? Jackie Coogan. Oh, I see. Thank you very much, Uncle. <laughs> Fe Uncle uh, oh no, Uncle Fester. Thank you so much, you piece of <laughs> shit. You know. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to get myself all set here. Now I just figured I did it last night. And I just gotten a haircut. Once his hair starts growing out, I'm wearing the cap again, because I get, I get, you know, the hair gets all silly. Mainly because I, this is my twelve dollar haircut. That's how much they charge here in Harlem for a haircut. 
And, wow. so, and I go to one of those, you, you, you know the barber shops, right, Charles? Uh, yeah, but yeah. there's like 20 bucks out here. Oh, oh it's 20 bucks, huh? Well, I give, yeah. the, I give the guy a $3 tip, so I throw him 15 Is that right? That should be okay, right? Yeah. So I figure, I don't, I don't know how many heads of hair this guy cuts a day, but they, uh, they do it pretty fast. So, you know, what have you? I, so I'm, I'm looking. I guess I'm looking okay. Hello, Josh. How are you this evening? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, everybody's really loud tonight for some reason. Got to bring. Ooh, sorry about that. But no, that's okay. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's, you know, I yeah. haven't changed anything. No, I haven't changed anything either. And but it's, uh, you know, it shouldn't be coming. Oh, I no, no, it's not coming from there either. Hmm. Hmm. Oh well, it do, it doesn't really matter. It's. Oh wait a minute. I know what the problem might be. Hold on a second. Let me just, uh, let me go to my audio. Where is my audio? I don't even know where my audio is. You got uh, your Skype set to automatic? Wait a minute. Now I've turned, it. now talk to me, everybody. Yeah. Hi. All right. Yeah, okay, uh, there we go. Did, you, did we. you take your Skype off automatic? No. Did no, you pull it down? No, it, was, it wasn't my like Skype was on automatic or anything <laughs> like that. It had to do with the fact that I had my volume up, okay? Uh. Uh, which was not uh, not good, okay? Well, I, I'll be right back. I want to get my earbuds. You, you want to get your earbuds? Oh, he... F <laughs> well, he uh, you should come prepared, Phil. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I gotta Shows get my... on the same time every day. I, huh? You know? Yep. Shows yep. on the same time every day. Yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> or... You know? Although I kind of like what happened last night where we were... Uh, where we, I turned the whole show off because I was having problems, and uh, with the uh, with the with uh, my uh, phone service or my FiOS, and um, then I came on like at about ten after eleven, and we did like a fifty-minute show, and God, that was a great little show last night, you know. Uh, maybe I should do a shorter show, or I don't know. I've got to rethink this whole thing. Because what's what's five night, four nights a week getting me nothing, you know? Uh, yeah, and here comes Dan. Let me see here. I can put him in the fourth slot. Uh, de -de 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 -de. No, huh? he's not up yet. Let me try him again. There we go. Now he's up. Once the picture comes up, I can find him on this list, and a list comes up that I have to. And put in Mr. Dan, and there he is. Okay, now I can do that. Let me see here. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look. look. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, you always have trouble when you first come on, Dan. Yeah, it's it's just I I can't figure out how the automatic microphone works to my phone or something. Yeah, well, but, uh, try, try Google. Go to Google and what do you, what do you are you using are you using the uh, uh, cell phone to do this? Yes. So yeah. So you have to figure out where it is on the cell phone that you turn the audio down. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But it didn't blare the whole time. It's just it's the automatic setting it does. Yeah, but I mean, you know, in the beginning, it's like we all we all start bleeding from our eyes for crying out loud. And, well, I apologize for that. It's okay. And I gotta get my PC worked on because I'm afraid that the new Skype might crash it or something. So, well, you that's know. the update on that. I work. I'll get that worked on pretty soon. <laughs> As soon as I, my guests have left next week, I'm going to purchase, I'm going to do something. I have an old uh, Mac Pro. And the old Mac Pros were great machines, okay? So great that I found that I, you, can't run, uh, you can't run Mojave on them because it doesn't have a certain thing called metal. It's a, a graphics uh, pro thing. And so, but I can put a new graphics card in there that will allow me to run Mojave. So I'm going to buy the new graphics card, put it in there, and upgrade my uh, my Mac Pro, my old Mac Pro, because that old Mac Pro, man, still works. It's still a workhorse. You Is know? it internal or external, your, the new graphics No, it's card. internal. Mm -hmm. It's internal, and you got to buy a few cords to make it work. And uh, then it uh, somehow um, Mojave recognizes it as being uh, 
capable of taking Mojave, and I can run Mojave on it. Plus, I could do the this show on there and not be using very much GPU power and CPU power. So, it's cool. It's really cool. You know. So, anyway, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of doing that. And uh, let me see here. Uh, what else was was, was there? Uh, uh, nothing else in my life. I'm I'm very tired tonight because last night I stayed up. What happened was uh, Albert is staying here with his wife. And uh, they were supposed to come in last uh, yesterday afternoon, late afternoon. Only thing was there were storms here in New York. And so the plane dropped down in Virginia, I think Norfolk, Virginia. And uh, they said, well, we don't have another flight going out till 6 in the morning, but you can take a bus. We have a bus. We can take you to New York City. Is, is that what he told you? <laughs> you know, uh, Albert is not one to spend a dollar foolishly, right? <laughs> right. Well, anyway. Uh, maybe he took the bus all the way from Florida, and he just told you he landed in Virginia. <laughs> yeah, well, th anyway, this is, this, is, this is Delta, okay? So uh, he, they get in at... Six o'clock this morning, just as Marjorie's leaving to go to work, and and I stayed up a bit, and I finally had to take a pill to put me to sleep because I was agitated about two things: whether they were going to get here or not, and how much FiOS was going to charge me for the next year. Uh, <laughs> so I called them today, and they said, "I got you know." Here's the funny part: is I called FiOS. And I don't think anybody there knows anything, okay? <laughs> uh, but uh, I call the first guy, and he says, well, no, you don't want to do that special program we're offering because you have, like, five boxes, and you pay for each of those boxes, and you also have ex extended service on, uh, on the DVR because I have a special all-house DVR where everything is coordinated with everything else and so on and so forth. And they said, so if you take that $179 deal we have, we have to add that to it, and your bill every month will come to $300. I said, well, that's not acceptable. And they said, well, you just should keep the program you have. Just because it's running out, you've served your obligation doesn't mean we don't keep honoring certain discounts. You have some discounts that are not expiring till next year, okay? And they said, so this one guy said, your bill will be $10 more than it has been. And I figured, that's fair. But then I called them back because I want to see if I heard everything right. And I get another guy, and he says, no, your bill will only go down, go up by $5, okay? But then I go to my old bill, and it says my bill's going to go up by $10. So I don't know who to believe. I would call a third person and see if they'll give you a refund. Well, anyway, I have for a year. And, they, and I said, what happens next year? And they said, well, then you just redo your two, do a two-year deal or something or make it. We don't. He says, I could tell you what you could do now, but I can't tell you what you can do then because I don't know what the discounts are going to be a year from now. Except okay. for the fact you don't want change, uh, why don't you call Spectrum and see what they offer? Well, I don't need that for a year. Okay. Uh, I, I know, but maybe you can make these guys uh, match uh, I, a different I, deal. I, I left Spectrum because I couldn't stand them any longer. Uh, okay. All right. I left Spectrum because they were charging me w way too much. I mean, even at this, this will be $250 I'm paying for my cable service. Okay. I But I have five boxes in this house and I've got you know the, the gigabyte uh, uh, throughput on the, uh, on, on the internet and so on so uh, but they were they were charging me $325 for bullshit you know why don't you cut the cord uh, and uh, you know just get the couple you of know, services you want here's what you you know when you say cut the cord you know People go, okay, you better go cut the cord. Show those sons of bitches. Cut the cord. But you're not cutting the cord because you're still taking your Internet service from them. Yes, but I am not uh, obligated to, to get, like, all these channels like QVC and, and all of those things and the Chinese channels. I, you know, I've, I've got uh, you know, sort of a minimal uh, uh, amount of stuff. 
and I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not even paying any well, less. You got to remember, I live in a house with a, with a wife, and she has the thing what she wants. Okay. Now I didn't have to. Get, I didn't have to get rid of HBO. What I was going to do, they said under this other plan that didn't include HBO or Cinemax, and I went, well, you know, then I can just get HBO now, right? You know, and I'm fine. Uh, and then when HBO Max comes, I want to buy that anyway. And I'm just wondering if HBO is going to make a deal that if you already have HBO and you want HBO Max, it's only a couple of dollars more. Um, What's HBO Max? What? What's HBO Max? HBO Max will be uh, HBO plus ESPN. Okay, I guess there's their, their paid service. And uh, also um, Hulu. Hulu. All for the six. Oh, all for sixteen ninety five. Disney. Disney's doing that. 16, Disney Plus. No, the, the Disney is coming out with Disney Plus. That's going. I'm yeah. going to subscribe to that, be, because uh, they they're going to be having a lot of stuff like Doctor Who. I think is is Doctor Who going to be on Disney Plus or HBO? I can't remember now. One or the other. Uh, but uh, they're, they're you know they're what's going to happen is there going to be so many of these fucking things. I'm going to be paying more for all these services together right. than I am for cable now. You know, yeah. you, know uh, we, you and I, Alex, watch uh, CBSN. Yeah. And uh, on there in the morning, they have this, uh, this they talk about that uh, they're, they're not getting certain uh, things on CBS or CBS is not on certain networks and uh, i think it's no uh, no, no it's on they, 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 they were and, having a fight with uh direct tv that's it okay and it was their local stations weren't being broke i think and i don't know maybe the network too i'm cbs I, well if, uh, if they weren't broadcasting the station i think that they weren't getting they had they weren't on uh, direct tv they just made a deal though oh okay uh, it, it, it's been those speed happen a lot don't huh? they those have, Happen a lot. Well, that's what you Alex was talking about. about that screen it says if you want such and such on on Directv, call do that. Well, that, that, Directv's right? argument was to CBS: Why should we have to pay you more to carry CBS stations than we do already? Because you've already got your own uh, cable, cha uh, you know, uh, internet channel in uh, C. What, what's it? What's it called? Uh, uh, CBS, um, all access. yeah, all access, uh, yeah, all access. all access. I had it, I, I let it go, yeah. Uh, uh, you have all access, uh, you've got uh, CBS, and you know, you're doing all these things. Hello to, uh, I want to say hello to Patrick because he's joining our little Mary, but well, why didn't he come up here? Hold on a second, oh, because I didn't do that, all righty. So you didn't I come will, up because he's sitting. I will do that. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh, anyway, um, um, uh, CBSN. You know, so what they're saying is, hey, CBS is doing a lot of stuff that has nothing to do any longer with uh, with us. You know, uh, and and why should we be paying extra money for something that uh, you know is already out there for people to get in other places too? So uh, it's it's. It, this is going to go on for quite a while, but you're going to find that most of these networks are going to say, hey, we got our own little channel going here, and you can get all the NBC shows and the old Will and Grace, you know, I mean, shit like that. <laughs> and how much of this, how much of this will, will the traffic bear? I mean, are you all willing to pay uh, $6.95 a, a month uh, for a service? Uh, no. No, I'm done. You know, I got uh, Sling, uh, Netflix. Uh, I even let the Showtime go. There was nothing on. I there. have Netflix that I'm paying I, for. I, I let the Hulu go too. Yeah, but I'm paying for Netflix. I'm paying. Netflix is getting sixteen bucks a month out of me. Because you, you don't have to. Well, I, if I want their four uh, K service, yeah, I do. Yeah. And and well, then uh, I I have Hulu for eleven ninety nine a month, but th and that's Hulu without commercials. I'm paying yeah. so I don't ha have to get it with commercials. So there oh. there I'm starting. Then you'll add maybe sixteen ninety five if you if I want to get HBO Max, 
and I think the Disney thing is going to be somewhere around sixteen ninety five. Before I'm throwing, I'd be paying a hundred dollars a month for all these, you know, these extra, extra. apps. You know, so well, how much will the traffic bear? And when they start competing with each other, how cheap are they all going to get? I don't, I don't know. Right now, maybe they're all in cahoots. Well, uh, no, but I mean, look, if you if you've got Disney and you've got AT and T with uh, 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 with uh, uh, HBO and so on with HBO Max because that's AT and T now, okay. Uh, and then you add to that several others that are up there. I'm, uh, I have a friend who's letting me jump onto his deal with, uh, with one particular channel that I like. Uh, that I, so I'm not paying for it, but if I paid for it, that would be six ninety five a month. And then, uh, you know, there are going to be all these other ones coming along. Everybody's coming out with, with these things, and they're all going to try and get into that market. And they're all going to, you know completely knock each other off. I mean, how many of these do you want? How many of these do you need? Do you, I, I found that I wasn't watching half of them and I got rid of them. Do, uh, you know, I mean, do I need, do I need, do you need CB? You got rid of CBS, uh, all uh, access, all, all access, you know, but I found it, but, that I was just watching CBS and, and, and almost exclusively. And, uh, you know, then, uh, the, uh, the sling gives me, uh, Below deck Mediterranean, so I don't need anything. Oh else. yeah, of course. I, do you like do you like below deck Mediterranean? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And, and just the regular I don't know why and, I don't know Captain Sandy. I, I, I don't know why I like that show, and it has not, there's no nudity or anything in it. There's not much, uh, 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 not much uh, swimsuit action in that show, yeah. but it's just it's a combination of being uh, a, a travel log and uh, lifestyle styles of the rich and famous. Combined yeah. with uh, a reality a show where, where people are trying to come on to each other below deck, you know. Yeah. It's anybody else watch this thing besides you know my other big show? That's, uh, I and I hate it. I'm getting to hate it. Pawn Stars. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm done with that. Yeah. Uh, you know because they they've been exposed as it's all set up and phony and. and have, you know, they? have they? Have uh, they? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, they they only come in for the thing. The people that come in. Uh, that are you know ahead of time they've got it all set up. So they own a uh, pawn. And people don't know they own a pawn shop, and people yeah. come in and they do so. But the show's gotten worse though because they went to an hour, and so they right. and the old man died. So once the yeah. old man died, so they it stretch it out and and it, it it's gotten a little contrived. And on top of that, I can't stand the guy who's the big the main guy at the sh on the show because he's always trying to tell stupid jokes. Uh, you know, I, I but like it used it. to be a good show. It was kind of like <laughs> it was like Antiques Roadshow. But I like the I like Antiques Roadshow. I, I think that's one of the best things you know on TV. You know, you get all of these people that come in and they got their shit that they think is worth something, and some of them are, and most of them aren't. You know. Uh, yeah. Hello, uh, Patrick. How are you? I'm dandy. I'm dandy. I'm peachy. I'm keen. I'm <laughs> terrific. I'm, yeah. Um, well. But no, I have. Uh, are we talking about our guilty pleasures now with Pawn Stars and Below Deck Mediterranean? And um, well, I hope so. Are there any other shows I watch? I, you know what I'm watching? Uh, we've gotten into Australia's Got Talent. Do they? Yes. How are you watching that? Well, I have my ways. Oh. I have a very big antenna. I have a very big antenna on my roof. Yeah, 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 it's up eight floors. Yeah, yeah. but I really like. Yeah, I like it. I like it better than America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent's just gotten too big for its britches. How can you listen to those guys? They all have accents. And I like Britain's Got Talent. You know what I loved about America's Got Talent? It's changed now. But up until this year, all four judges weren't from the United States. Huh. It was America's Got Talent being judged. You know, it was. What's her name from the Spice Girls and uh, the model? I uh, uh, can't remember her name now. Uh, my nose. Is I haven't itching. watched it in years. Is that Simon Cowell? And Simon Cowell and Howie Mandel, Simon. who's from Canada. Oh, that's right. He's from Canada. Yeah. That's now right. they've got two women on there that are Americans. So now it's a little more like America's Got Talent. 
Am I boring Howard you with Stern this, Josh? Because this is, doesn't seem like the kind of fair you would watch. <laughs> uh, I don't watch those shows. No, not no. I don't think I don't think I watch anything that you mentioned so far. Do you have? I think a, it was a you, Supreme Court decision on America's Got Talent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wait, well, wait a minute. Do you, hold on a second, Dan. Do you, uh, Josh, do you have a guilty pleasure of something you watch? That you oh, really, as far as shows, I don't know. I mean, you watch the sports. Well, yeah, but. I mean that that's pretty popular. I mean, as a show, I mean I don't know if I watch anything that's like, you know, outside the normal. I'm not really? trying to think if there is anything. Well, can I tell you the worst bad. one? The worst one I got hooked on for a while. Of it. <laughs> Cheater, cheaters. Uh, Anybody yeah. watch Isn't cheaters? Like uh, late at night. Yeah, and it's really a low rent show. Yeah, but every week. Um, they go out with some person who suspects they're being cheated on by their boyfriend or their girlfriend, and they follow detectives follow them around and take <laughs> photographs of them and videos of them, and then they bring them back to the person who is the thinking that they're being cheated on, mm -hmm. and uh, then they confront them. Uh, and it's just the lowest form of show business. There's no what, question. What about that guy that was a mayor and uh, Sp Springer? Uh, he he. That's a similar show. <laughs> no, but uh, no, no, no. That it, it has. It's nowhere near. Hello, by the way, to uh, to Kevin who has just joined us. Let me just put him on there. There we go. Hi, Kevin. Um, no, Springer is a different deal altogether. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I like the guy that was the security guard on Springer. Uh, the, he's bald, and uh, he, uh, he's got his Steve own show Wilco. now. Steve Wilco. Yeah, I like him, too. Yeah. He's always got the DNA results. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like yeah. Mark Povich? Uh, I, don't, I don't watch him. You are not the father. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, but I cheaters, for some reason, I just, you know, I just like to see people catching other people cheating on other people and be glad it isn't me. You know, so. yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't watch anything probably like that. I mean, my biggest thing now is there's so many shows that they make and then like, they're not consistent when they come back and things anymore. You know, like especially the, I don't really watch anything on the major networks like you know ABC, NBC, and all that. But it's just things tend to go away for longer than they were. Like I've been waiting for Homeland to come back for like. Two fucking yeah. years now. Like, where's it at? I don't know. It's, co it's coming back, yeah. but it's its last season. Thank yeah, God. So they say, and then sometimes <laughs> the next day you'll read an interview where they're like, well, we don't know. It depends. You know, I mean, it's all, I mean, it's just like, you know, it's like, you just never know. I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, well you know. But what? I don't know when it's coming back. It should have been back by now, like six months ago, and you're still waiting. Here's, here's what I hated. Uh, there's a channel called the DC Channel. DC Comics has the channel. And they, they're doing some very good programming on it. They did a show called Titans, which was terrific. They did a show uh, uh, called uh, Doom Patrol, which is coming back again for another season. And then they did Swamp Thing. Remember Swamp Thing? There was a movie, several movies of it, uh, about this guy in the swamps who's a Swamp Thing, right? And I started watching it. After the first episode went on, DC announced they were canceling the show. <laughs> but they were going to run the 10 episodes they had done already. Yeah. Now, my question is, what is supposed to now be my investment in this show? Right. Why See, 10 episodes? Yeah, why yeah should, that's, why? Been, that's been my problem with some of like Netflix and Amazon and all them. is I almost wait now and watch shows later. Mm -hmm. because I'm worried that they'll make a show and like you say I'll watch you know the first season which might only be like eight episodes or whatever and then they don't fucking bring it back renew you know, it why does it take so long to get another better call Saul or uh, yeah, uh, well I, here's what I don't understand how do you cancel a show after the first episode runs not yeah. being able to see what the reaction is from the public because remember this is on an app this is not on a network 
And so therefore, it's not like they get immediate results on this. They have to look at an overall arc for like 10 weeks and see how many people were watching it and liked it. People might suddenly catch up to it by the third episode and say, well, I want to start from the beginning and whatever. But no, you cancel it after the first show? What is that all about? They had a focus group, and the focus group said, cancel this. Focus. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah focus group, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, but uh, it, yeah, you know, I so I mean uh, that that uh, kind of pisses me off. There are there is a show I watched on Amazon, uh, a show. Does anybody here watch Preacher? No. no, no. Am I the only one? Preacher is really terrific. It's really a very good show, uh, and fun. Uh, and the same people who did Preacher, Seth Rogen and his partner Evan Goldberg, um, did this one which is by the same uh, 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 comic book writer that did, uh, uh, did uh, Preacher. And it's called The Boys. And The Boys are four guys. That's, that's on Netflix? No, it's on Amazon. Oh, okay, yeah. They, I saw the, um, the yeah, banner for yeah. it. I, I, you know, I, it took me a while. A couple episodes, I wondered whether I liked it or not. As it went on, I really got to like it. And by the end, I went, this is terrific. And it, what it really is, it's all about, it's kind of almost a put down of Marvel in that there's this big corporation that has these superheroes and they work for them and they go out saving the world, but they also go out filming it, making movies about them and TV series about them and dolls and merchandising all on the with these superheroes but it turns out that when you get up really close to this these superheroes they're all totally fucked i mean they're not nice guys they're not heroes and these four people are out are really out to expose them uh and uh it, it i won't tell you what goes on but i really enjoyed it I thought it was really well worth watching. And I, it was worth watching because I looked it up and they've already signed it for another season. Okay? So I'm going to be happy again next year. All right. Unless, of course, I, I, ha unless I die of my prostate cancer, in which case. I guess I've just found that I thought Netflix and Amazon, I watch a lot of their shows, but I've my opinion has always been they either make, like, really, really great shows yeah, or it's just fucking terrible yes you're right and you watch like three minutes and you're like whoever decided that this should be put on any type of air bring me that person right now and they're fired yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. and they like fucked up kind of sense show. eight remember <laughs> sense eight that was the first season was great and then it just fell apart uh you know yeah. uh, but i like uh I like drama, you know, mostly, and especially some kind of drama that maybe has, like, some sarcastic or dry humor or whatever. So my wife just started watching because I had saw it, and so I rewatched it with her because it'll be back on soon. I uh, really liked Ozark, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, Jason Bateman usually does regular comedy, but I think it's great. I like the first season, but I couldn't get into the second season. Yeah. Ke Kevin, yeah, do you have any guilty pleasure at all? Nah, not really. You know, if I watch something and get into it, I don't really have anything I'm into right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, Dan, how about you? You got a guilty pleasure? Well, I um, I've kind of been I've I've kind of been a uh, Trekkie back in back in the old days, and I was kind of when Star Trek Discovery came out on the CBS All Access, yeah. I kind of saw clips of it, and I was kind of like, yeah, they're kind of playing a little fast and loose with all the canonical stuff, probably as, uh, you know, Patrick might uh, identify with Star Wars. But then recently they come out with this Picard, the Star Trek Picard trailer. Yeah. And I'm like, damn it. I was a Next Generation guy. They got my goddamn dollars a month now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know when Picard starts, but uh, uh, you know, I think like December maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was surprised with all the people that that were coming back. Data's coming back. By the way, you know what? What, what I remember most about Patrick Stewart from interviewing him 
was he was the epitome of the insecurity of an actor and of an <laughs> actor's life. Because after I interviewed him, I, you know, the mics were off and the whatever, and I shook his hand. I said, really, thank you very much for coming by. You're really terrific, and please come by and see us again. He said, well, you know, if I get another job, I'll be happy to. And I said, what? And he said, well, you know, you never know, you know? He said, the last job I did, the thing I'm out promoting right now, may be the last thing anybody hires me to do. And I went, God, I'm glad I'm not an actor, <laughs> you know? Because I heard that from other actors. That the day uh -huh. they, when they're through with their last day, they have to, like, sign some papers and sign out. And I had a friend say, every time he signed out, he wondered if that was the last job he was ever going to have in show business. And here was a guy like Patrick Stewart who's worried that he's not going to be able to get another job. And I'm going, if anybody shouldn't worry about that, it would be Patrick Stewart, right? You know. So, but, I, but I always liked him for that because he was as insecure as I am. So I, I like that. And but he never worked again after your interview. Oh, yeah, he never worked again. <laughs> My God, there's an apart in a wheelchair he hasn't played. You know, talk, so. We'll talk about a different. You got uh, William Shatner and Patrick Stewart. Talk about the vast difference in acting ability between the two, you know? I liked William Shatner, uh, the Star Trek, better than. I uh, like William Shatner, too, but. And the characters. Uh, but oh, I, 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 Scotty's I, not coming back. Well, I, 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 I like. <laughs> I got to tell you, I like Patrick Stewart a lot as Picard. I think that, that it, it took yeah. the, that particular role and and made it mature, and and made it really good. Uh, whereas, uh, uh, you know, I mean, Shatner was a cartoon. Mm -hmm. I think it was a good cartoon, but he was a cartoon nonetheless. And I I always loved his name because Shatner sounded like the past tense. Mm -hmm. You know, or something yeah. you do in the Chat. morning, and, and when Chat. you have a little bit of water in your Chat. stool, it, a little <laughs> bit of water in your stool, it's a Shatner. Right? Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, Patrick Stewart had gravitas. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, hold on a second. How many people do we have here? Oh, we do. We have six people. Right. Okay. Fine. I'm just trying to figure this out because I'm. Looking at my eight, in case anybody else calls, I have the eight template up. Okay. Um, uh, so, anyway, so you know, I mean, um, how, is there too much TV? Because I think there's too much TV. Yeah. yeah. Not for me. Huh? <laughs> I got Skype. Uh, not Skype. I got the whatever that one is that I got. You no, know, but but there's too much TV. I mean, we you know like. I've got Netflix, Hulu. I've got HBO. I got Showtime. Anybody watching the Russell Crowe Roger Ailes thing? No, no? Uh, I haven't seen that yet. No, I, I, What's it called? You know? It's Forgot called. About that. It's called Roger Ailes has a real bad prostate problem. That's what it's called. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. And Seth MacFarlane's in it, by the way, and he's pretty good. Oh. Yes, I see that, uh, we, yes, we have Charlie holding his hand up. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, you talk about whether it's too much TV or not. Mm -hmm. One of my greatest fears of death is that I'm going to die with a whole bunch of shit out there on the DVR and I'm never going to get to see. Well, <laughs> my, my big fear is I'm going to die and uh, they're going to open up my computer and find all my porn. That's what I, my big fear is. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, so. Uh, but, uh, First world problems. Huh? First world problems. Right, right. Yeah. Just put a, a really good pass a password on it and, you know, you protect that. Yeah. Uh, and nobody will ever see it. Yeah. I just wonder why there's no room on this disc. Well, you know something, I have a, uh, you know, I bought a, uh, what we call a, um, what do you call those disc arrays? Um, uh, a, a mass. No, it's not called a mass. I think it's called disc. No, array. mass. N A N A S. Oh, NAS. And yeah, and uh, uh, it's I've got uh, eleven terabytes of space on it. 
okay, uh, of usable space. Because what happens, what I love about it is if any one of the drives go bad, all I have to do is replace it, and I haven't lost anything, okay? Uh, but I, I still have 10 terabytes to use up, and I haven't used 10 terabytes. I haven't even come close, you know. And there's not enough good porn to fill it up with, so I've got to find other stuff to fill it up with. So what I'm using it for is to archive these shows, the videos of these shows, because I know that if it ever goes bad, I just pull out the hard drive and put in a new hard drive. So. Yeah, my Drobo has five drives, yeah, and uh, it's a uh, RAID six, so I could lose two drives and still uh, uh, be able to. Yeah. Regenerate Chances that these. you're going to lose two drives at once, though, is pretty, you know. Yeah, well, and and I still got uh, I've got five uh, eight terabyte. Well, reds. let's not bore people with this, but basically. I got 21 terabytes after the, the, the six. Oh, good. That's fine. That's good. You ever going to use them up? I don't think so. It's all just photos. The yeah. only thing I put on that is photos. What happened to uh, What happened to Kevin? Kevin, we Kevin's, lost your picture. Oh, there he is. There he is. Thank oh, you, man. Back. Well, yes, 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 Dan. Sorry, I pushed the wrong button. Yes, Dan. Uh, you said you were keeping uh, old old shows on those old discs. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about maybe like on a weekend or something, pulling out something old and playing it? Like what? Mm-hmm. What has gone by? We already do that on the weekends. We play, uh, you know, the best of shows and stuff on. on How the- far back do you go? Oh, I have every show we've ever done on Gabnet. Oh. Uh, for all cool. the different shows. Okay. All right. All right. Does that answer your question? Sure, I guess so. Can you play only shows that Dan was on? I even have the one show Josh did. (laughs) Yeah. 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 We should bring that back. Well, we should play it some night. Just just in retrospect Uh, to see. uh, (laughs) Yeah. Um. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Um, where was I going to go now? I have nowhere to go. Oh, I have a couple of items here. Hold on a second. I actually did a little prep. Whoa, that's new. Alex did prep. Did you drink that stuff? Oh, let me see here. I have my, have my receipts for my dental work. Yeah. Um, By the way, I think I'm, I'm going to be at something like two or three grand if I have to have this one tooth uh, uh uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, um, what's the thing they do? Root canal. Rooted. Rooted. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just. I've just figured. Ah, what the hell? You know. So I spend all my money. It's no big deal. God forbid I should die and have some of it left over. You know. <laughs> do you want to? That's the advantage <clears throat> to knowing when you're going to die, because then you would know how fast to spend your money. And, and yeah, I, I guess it is. That makes sense, doesn't it? I read this yeah. article and, and, today I, and about I love a, 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 I, I love a, but, tomorrow. <laughs> a Detroit Red Wings uh, player that made thirteen million dollars, and now he's walking around homeless uh, with gauze wrapped around his feet and, in uh, in Canada. And uh, uh, people, the he's he's got a thousand dollars a month coming in from the uh, National Hockey League and I guess he's spending that on drugs and they try to get him off the street and he won't get off the street. Why are you telling so, me this? I, you know, I'm not going to wind up that way. Uh, well, if you spend it all first, uh, you know. Well, you, here's the part that bothers me. I'm going to go out and spend this maybe two grand to get the root canal with the, with the crown on it and then I have, still have some other teeth that have to be done. And then I got to do I'm got to do the implant, which looks like it. That's still two years away because of my dental. She she I went in for the implant, and she wound up seeing so many things that were wrong that we haven't gotten around to that yet. And the money for that, I you know next year I have to wait till the first of the year to get some of the work done because that's when my when my uh, uh, what do you call it uh, dental plan replenishes itself to twenty five hundred dollars. But anyway. You know, the the implant if you wait two years might even be cheaper than it is now. Well <laughs> well here's here's the problem. See 
I'm thinking they're going to figure, they're going to fix every tooth in my mouth. I'm going to have just a beautiful mouth, folks. It's just going to be perfect, right? And I'm going to drop dead. So what good does all this work do me, you know? I'll just make sure they fill it with gold, see? <laughs> and then then Marjorie can have your mouth extracted, and it's an investment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. But you're assuming I'm going first. Aha! Ah. 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 Right. By the way, my friend Jack Garfine, you know, you know Jack. Yeah, how's he doing? He's doing great. He's getting married this weekend. Oh. At seven. Wow, at, at 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 eighty eight. Awesome. Oh wow. To Natalia, who's a lovely, wonderful woman. We love her dearly. But anyway, so. Uh, Is the uh, cat going to be the ring bearer? Uh, yeah, that, if, <laughs> yes, it's not a bad idea. Actually, <laughs> they should bring the cat. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, do you know what happened uh, fifty years ago today, on August eighth, nineteen sixty nine? Abbey uh, yeah. Road. Huh? Abbey Road. Well, what about Abbey Road? They walked across the street, and, and the album yeah. came out. And right? they, well, no, they walked across the street and took the photograph, and then. Sh yeah. At, but here's the question. What was the Beatles' last recorded album? Oh. Uh, wow. God, I, I don't know. know. Well, see, so, I heard somebody say that Abbey Road was their last recorded album. But that was their last released album. Yeah, because they broke up no, not far let after. It be no, released after Abbey Road. It, when, uh, they Let It Be was recorded after Abbey Road. It was in the can. They went and did uh, Let It Be. They released that first, and then Abbey Road was released. I know I was around for it. Because they had all kinds of weird stuff going on yeah. like that. They had stuff that they'd release, and then they had in the can. It was already recorded, and it was weird. Let me put yeah. it this way. The day that Let It Be came out, I was at WMCA in New York, Okay. And somehow with WMCA, I don't know how they did it, were always the first to get a new Beatles album on the air. And um, yeah, we got... Not WABC, they were a W A Beatles C. Yeah, right. Well, they we got them first, okay? Yeah. So we got Let It Be first, and we played the whole Let It Be album. Do you know what we had on about a week later? Abbey Road. It had been finished and in the can, and somebody we knew got a hold of it and got it to us. But wow. Let It Be was the album that they were promoting at the time. But Let It Be came out, and then Abbey Road came out. But Abbey Road, I believe, was recorded, physically recorded, before Let It Be. Does that sound right, Kevin? It, it sounds right, yeah. I remember weird stuff going on around that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, uh, it was, uh, but anyway, you're right. It was uh, uh, 50 years ago today, Sergeant Pepper taught, the, no, uh, on <laughs> August 8th, 1969, the world famous band stepped out from London's EMI recording studios to stride single file across the black and white stripes of Abbey Road's nearby zebra crossing. I'm using the British term. Did you like that? Okay. Anyway, um, with photographer Ian McMillan balanced on a stepladder and one policeman steering, uh, stopping the street light, uh, street, streets light traffic. The Beatles crossed back and forth three times, led by John Lennon, followed by Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison. I should have actually asked that question for you to tell me what order they were in. Uh, well, yeah, because jo uh, uh, John's the pallbearer, right? Yeah. And, you know, because Paul's dead, you know. <laughs> oh, Number Jesus. nine. You know something? You're giving me Paul's you're giving dead. me a flashback to the whole thing I did with yeah, the Paul is yeah, dead Paul, shit. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. thought that was fascinating when I heard about that. Yeah. The whole Paul dead thing. I always thought that was neat. That well, whole story. It actually, just, although other people lay claim to it, the, the whole thing, that whole thing started on my show here oh, in New York. Oh, that's right. Well, they sent you to London, right? But no, but here's what happened. Uh, I was on the air one night, and um, some guy calls me up and says, "You know, Paul's dead." 
And I said, what? And he started going this whole thing about why Paul was dead and how you could look at the albums and you could see this and you could see that and whatever. And we discussed it and some other people called up about it and it went on for a couple of hours. And then that was it, right? Cut to a month later. Somebody else picked I, it I come into work and the uh, person at the, uh, the front desk says, so you're going to talk about the Paul is dead rumor tonight? I said, what? And they said, that there's a, there's a rumor going around that Paul's dead because of all the album covers and everything. I said, I did that a month ago. You know, and then we forgot about it. But somehow it had, like, taken root and exploded into this whole thing. And, and now every other, all other disc jockeys claim, oh, I was the first to do it and whatever. But no, it started on my fucking radio. It actually started out in the Midwest at a college. Where this Dermione song. Didman. Yeah. Dermione. Yeah, yeah, college. Oh, right, college. So I, yeah, so like I went on the air line that night, and I remember how I started it. I said to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, where is Paul McCartney tonight? And then we went into the whole thing about the Paul is Dead thing and how, you know, certain things about the album, because I had remembered what we had done a month earlier. And people started calling in, and then all of a sudden it was, I did a five-hour show every night. God. Five fucking hours. Five <laughs> hours. And and we talked. We were playing our records backwards and everything. And, oh, yeah. And, and we were talking about it. And now now I'm finding myself playing records backwards <laughs> and forwards and, and shoving them up my ass and playing them. <laughs> and uh, we're analyzing everything on Number every nine. album cover. And, uh, you know. Uh, it, the guy on the uh, Abbey Road, and it wasn't the Abbey Road, was it the Abbey Road cover? No, no. What was it? There was a one album, and they said it wasn't Paul because Paul parted his hair on the head, of, had his hair <laughs> parted on the other side or whatever. Simon Sergeant Pepper. There, yeah, there was no nothing being considered that perhaps the negative was reversed, yeah. you know. But anyway, we went on with this thing, and so... Um, I go back on the next night, and people still, that's all they want to talk about. Okay, so we're back on the case again. It just took more acid. And, yeah, and I'm saying to myself, you know, I, I hope this fucking stops, because I'm, you know, my eyes are crossing from looking at albums and looking for hairlines on Paul McCartney and, you know, seeing that who's the walrus was Paul. Oh, okay, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, that's, um, um, death thing. Now, I, I go home. And I get a call, and it's the uh, program director of the radio station. It's WMCA in New York. And he says, Alex? He said, what? He said, uh, you're doing this uh, Paul is dead thing. I said, no, last night was the last night. I'm through with it. You know, I don't want to do another night of this. If I do another night of this, I am going to go absolutely fucking crazy hearing all these <laughs> half-ass theories about Paul McCartney being dead. And he said... If you can keep it going one more night, we'll send you to England. <laughs> Sign me up. I'll talk about Paul Z now. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Just like Lester Holt on Let's the scene, talk huh? some more about Paul McCartney being dead because <laughs> Alex Lester is a fucking whore. <laughs> right? And I'd never been to England. I'd never been out of the United States. So that, that morning when I got off the air, because it was a show that went from... <laughs> One what, 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 midnight, I think it was, until five in the morning, and uh, they ran me through a gauntlet because in those days, to get a passport, you had to get inoculated, and you had to get the passport. And and since uh, my uh, the station was well connected politically, a process that normally took most people a month, they managed to do in six hours for me. And they got me a passport and my inoculations, and they had me go home. Actually, I didn't even go home. I, Ronnie was then my wife. She had to come down and bring me my clothes so I could then make a plane at 6 o'clock at night and get to London. I'm on the plane. I can't go to sleep because I'm so revved up. I get to London, and now it's morning, and I suddenly realize I can't go to sleep because it's Friday, and if I don't go over to Apple and, and get this story somehow... Uh, mm -hmm. There's going to be nobody to talk to on Saturday. 
So now <laughs> I'm I'm now going. God, I think I was at that point 18 hours without sleep, maybe <laughs> longer. Maybe it was 24 hours. So I wind up at uh, at Apple Records, and uh, this guy Derek Taylor, who was the head of the Beatles uh, press secretary, uh, greeted me and said, "Welcome. We know you're here from WMCA, one of our favorite radio stations." Um, um, and then all of a sudden, all the they were they were representing these uh, Hare Krishna people who were then coming in and playing Hare Krishna all over the office, <laughs> you know. Ching, and, ching, ching, and, ching, and, ching. and thank God they were doing that because that was keeping me awake because I was, you know. And suddenly, um, Derek says to me, "Would you like some hash?" <laughs> and I go, "Well." Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Why not? You know, because I'm hip oh, and I got goodness. hair down to here, and I'm I'm at Apple, and I want to smoke hash at the Beatles headquarters, right? So I do the hash, and then he says to me, "Oh, by the way, I just found out Ringo's here. I think <laughs> would you like to interview him?" And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I don't even know where the fuck I am. I'm I'm like 36 hours without sleep. I'm high on fucking hash, and now I'm gonna go down and interview Ringo Starr. Okay, so they take me down to WMCA got their money's worth. They take me down to Ringo. Okay, and I turn on the tape recorder and I start interviewing him. And at a certain point, I can't think of what my next question is gonna be. I just completely blank. And I go, so, so that wasn't your event? standard way of interviewing No, that me. wasn't my standard way of interviewing at all. And I just yeah. went, oh, boy, am I fucking stoned out of my mind. And uh, I, uh, I immediately, uh, uh, not being able to come up with the next question, I, 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 said, to, uh, I said to Ringo, I said, uh, Boy, I am fucked up. And he looks at me and he goes, you kind of look it. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, we continued with the interview. But I was just, finally, I, what I had to do was I, they wanted me to go there. I said I was going to go there in order to, uh, by the way, hello to uh, Tony. Yeah, I was listening to the whole Paul is dead. I I love yeah, that story. Yeah, uh, um, uh, I, I'm really I'm stoned. I'm tired <laughs> of these fucking Hare Krishna people. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and I'm I I, I I but I have to get a story. So what you do? So I found out that I could get some sleep, and on Saturday I could go over to uh, I could go over to uh, uh, Paul McCartney's hairdresser. Wow. And I managed to prove that Paul was alive. And how I did it was, I said, is there any way you can tell me, like we have pictures here of Paul, and they say this is not Paul. Is that Paul? He says, it's definitely Paul. He said, look at any photographs of Paul and look at his hair. I don't care if the, if the image has been reversed or whatever. The one thing about people's hair is they always have a natural break in their hair. And with the Beatles, they all kind of wore their hair with bangs and so on. He said, you notice where Paul's hair breaks? And he pointed to it. He said, look at any photograph of Paul, even the ones that are supposedly taken after he was dead, and it's his double from, you know, I, Manchester I or whatever. Just look at where the hair breaks and you'll see. And so that was my detective work that proved conclusively that Paul McCartney was alive because Paul McCartney wasn't coming into Apple that day to talk to me, okay? <laughs> so you, you fell for that Paul McCartney uh, is alive thing. He, he is dead. Yeah. No, no, no. I, actually, what I, what I, the premise I went over there on was I didn't want to go over there and say, I'm, I'm out to prove that Paul McCartney is dead. I was going over there to prove that he was alive, okay? I didn't want the onus on me that I was going to prove he was dead. But that, that, was the, um, that was the whole thing. The one thing I did, I did 
managed to get to Ringo about, and I still have the Ringo interview here somewhere. Ooh. I should try would, and see if I can find shit. it and dig would, it out and play it, because you'll hear how fucking stoned I was. And even in the middle of that interview, I go, hey, man, I'm fucking stoned. I'm what were you on the house, man? I'm going to do drugs soon, I think. <laughs> what? That's it. What'd you say? I want to do. I want to do LSD once before I drop dead. We don't want you to do LSD, okay? <laughs> anyway, we think you're on LSD now. I'm not. It's called Bayer. It's called Bayer. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah. yeah. What but, were you on, Alex? Do you remember? It was hash. 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 So that just gets you stoned right away, then. But you remembered everything, though. Well, yeah, yeah, kinda. Hey, Tony. But anyway, anyway, the one thing, the one thing that I did say to Ringo was that when I was, uh, when I was uh, in Houston, Texas, I am, uh, I didn't MC it. Somebody else MC'd it, but we held a Beatles concert, and I was backstage, or not backstage, but in back of the stage. Okay, and as soon as they played their last number, they did only like a. 30 minute, 35 minute set, and then they, they ran off to run into an armored car and be taken to their hotel, right? So they come rushing off the stage and I had my hand on the stair and Ringo stepped on it. Uh, oh no. And, and so I told him, you know, we've met before. And he goes, where? And I said, Houston, Texas, you stepped on my hand. Oh, and he said, "Oh, I'm so, I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm so sorry I stepped on your hand." I said, "You yeah, know, well, you know, I never washed it again." Okay, you know. <laughs> yes, uh, Dan. Uh, I was gonna say something to Tony as as someone who, uh, you know, back in the old days, I I did the uh, fair share of LSD. Uh, if I, if, uh, who if would I have known? Who would have known? Who, Dan, off. Dan, who would have known that <laughs> right. was true? Go ahead. Anyway, I, I know. Well, I was just gonna say to Tony that if I if I went into your house and took a couple of acid with those walls and the, the, <laughs> the curtain, that would be a hell of an experience. I would I would I would just be mesmerized looking at the walls. They'd be moving around and stuff like that. Wait till you see my mother. That don't really. Throw I wouldn't have had. To, I, I, I I wouldn't have had to see the those walls out. if I remember correctly. I did see those walls when I was high on LSD. So. Yeah. I yeah. thought the last Eagles concert was in San Francisco at, uh, at it was. Candlestick Park. It, it was. You know, the guy who was the photographer there, Jim Marshall, yeah. showed me how to use my first pro camera. Okay. I met him at a party. So is that I your touch? Is, is that your touch with greatness? Is that what you're saying? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Jim Marshall was great. You know, it was very good. It was very good. Um, but anyway, so the Beatles. Uh, uh, it was released. Uh, the album was released on September 26, 1969. So that was uh, about a month later, and is regarded as the band's best. And to commemorate the 50th anniversary, the Beatles record companies Apple and Universal Music are overseeing a worldwide release on September 27th of a series of special Abbey Road packages. Um, it's also in honor of money, I might add. <laughs> Uh, uh, in a written Box forward set. to the anniversary edition packages, McCartney recalls the Beatles' recording journey had gone through many twists and turns, lear leaning, learning curves, and thrilling rides, and we were still wondering at the magic w of it all. Uh, you know something? I got to tell you, um, uh, the, um, the in an interview that he was do he did, they said that they didn't know what to call that album. Uh, they had all kinds of weird names for it. They, you know, and they, he, I think he named what a couple of them were. And he said, we finally said, well, we're doing this at the Abbey Road Studios. Why don't we just call it Abbey Road? And he said, sure. And they said, okay, quick, let's go take a picture. And they went out and took the picture. And that's how they came up with the name Abbey Road. You know, it was just, it, it, was, it was the last thought they had, but it seemed like the best one. Yes, Dan. Uh, you you meant did you mention that that Abbey Road was considered the Beatles' best album? That's what it says I, here, but I and don't. That's kind of a Herculean task to determine, but I don't know. I, I don't mean, think it was their best. Be I, don't, I, I think the it, White Album was up there for me. 
Well, I think I, uh, most people would agree that their best album, if we want to think about it, was Sgt. Pepper. Just yeah, Sgt. Pepper. Just because, because it was a complete... The white it, album oh, is racist. So the white <laughs> album is racist. <laughs> Do you know when it first came out, they all had uh, serial numbers, every copy of the White Album, embossed on the front cover. And uh, when, I, when I was getting mine from the record company, because the record companies were you know, giving us free copies, I went looking through all of them and said, I want the lowest number possible. And I got a very low number. And uh, I think I, I sold it years ago. Did it, did it say not for sale on the label? No. Oh, because usually when you got the free ones from the record company, it would say not for sale. No. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No. You know, uh, uh, I forgot what they... You know what? I still have in storage, and uh, Damien, I mean, if you're listening, since you're in charge of my storage, you might be able to find it. Uh, I couldn't get rid of it. Uh, as I have a test pressing of The Who by uh, Tommy by The Who. Um, uh, test pressing. In fact, I, it has a mimeograph page on it that lists all the titles of the songs. And at the top it says, Tommy, uh, uh, Tommy, a rock op, uh, what was it called? What, what did a they do? They, uh, a rock oh, oh, opera. I see, yeah. I see. It, I remember what it says now. It says, Tommy, an opera. And then they carrot, put a carrot in there and somebody wrote in rock. Oh wow! Yeah, and, and and I have that, and it, it's a test pressing. It has no label on it, and it's it was a test pressing. And uh, I've tried to sell. I tried to sell that once, and I didn't get a price on it because the guy who was valuing, because I was getting rid of my entire record collection, who was valuing the record collection, could not put a price on it because of the nature of it. It was a test pressing. He didn't know how to value a test pressing. Did no. you sell the copy of their Coming to Take Me Away Ha Ha album that I loaned you? I, I think I actually threw that in the garbage, Phil. I hate to say that. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> hey, uh, a quick question about that. What is, uh, you said they're coming to take me away. Uh, what is the uh, the flip side when you flip that single over? Uh, you mean, you mean, you mean, you mean, it's backwards. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just play the song backwards. Is that all? I, I, I couldn't remember that. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, really? Hmm. Yeah, it's backwards. Life is beautiful. Well, that's the 45. The 45 is backwards. But the album had, you know, didn't have that. Yeah. yeah. Boy, was that a terrible record. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was number yeah, one. Fine. I liked it. I, I'm a Dr. Mento fan. So on I WMCA, it. it was number one, and then the Trogs, uh, uh, Wild Thing, I think, pushed wow. them out of. Yeah, pushed them out of number one. As as well, it should have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I I still like they're coming to take me away, huh? Yeah. Do you remember the the words at the beginning? Remember when you ran away? Remember when you went away? Ran Black away. Bat, you... I, I, don't I got on my knees and begged you not to leave problem. because I, I go berserk. Well, you left well, me anyhow. And then. Away, ha, ha, ho, he, 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 to the funny <laughs> farm. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then they had that radio sorry. show, too. I, I got to tell you something. Uh, you know, I I have my all my songs on my iPhone and I have my little. You know, ear pods, uh, Bluetooth ear pods, and and the music comes on randomly. And today, I can't remember was it today or yesterday. I was listening to it, and all of a sudden, on came Chuck Berry's Nadine. Mm -hmm. You remember the, the the song Nadine by Chuck Berry? And I listened to it, and I went, "Wow." What a great fucking set of lyrics. You know, I've often said the two, three greatest lyricists of the 20th century were Cole Porter, John Lennon, and Chuck Berry as lyricists. I mean, they could take a lyric and, like a, a, a glove on a hand, make it just the lyrics just fit perfectly. 
yeah. you know, to, to all the other words in that song. And I was listening to Nadine. Listen to the lyrics of Nadine. Tell me if these aren't the most intelligent lyrics you've ever heard. As I got on a city bus and found a vacant seat, I thought I saw my future bride walking up the street. I shouted to the driver, hey, conductor, you must slow down. I think I see her. Please let me off this bus. Nadine, honey, is that you? Oh, Nadine, honey, is that you? Seems like every time I see you, darling, you got something else to do. And you thought <laughs> the coming to take me away, haha, was a piece of uh, shit? No, this is, th <laughs> these are great lyrics, Phil. Oh, yeah. I saw her from the corner as she turned and doubled back and started walking towards a coffee-colored Cadillac. I was pushing through the crowd to get to where she's at, and I was, cam and I was campaign shouting like a southern diplomat. I mean, come on, where do you get these lyrics from? I, I Nadine, wonder too. honey, is that you, honey? Nadine, honey, is where are you? Seems like every time I catch up with you, you're up to something new. What about my dingling? Uh, <laughs> oh, well, that's a great one. Well, they, no, no, well, well, wait, 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 wait. It's the okay. one where he it, uh, it was a quarter to four and blah 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 and all the d hours of the day. And, and the greatest line of all time is out of that. And he goes, I boogied in the hallway. I, bo bo I boogied in the hallway. But what's the word? I'm trying to think. I boogied somewhere. I boogied in the hallway. I boogied on the... Boogie in the den. That, I boogied, I, yeah, I know. I, I yeah, can't remember. I, I boogied, blah, 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 blah. And I wiped and it on the wall. Again. Ah, what was it? I boogied in the basement. I boogied in the hall. I boogied on the something or another. I boogied in the den, and then we boogied well, again. No, no, like no. That. And then I wiped it on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me that isn't, you know, he was one of the greatest lyricists of all time. Yeah. You know. And, and uh, I don't care what you say, Phil. I didn't think of that. Huh? I don't, I don't agree. That song is first. Well, now, here. This um, from the guy who likes her coming to take me away. Ha, ha. Yes, I do. I even like it backwards. Yeah. What, what well, did here they... now, not to get gross, but I've heard rumors about Chuck Berry that he was into kind of some weird yeah. stuff. Yeah, oh, absolutely, like absolutely. That. There was a, um, there was a, a tape, a videotape that was released uh, of yeah. him fucking some woman. And um, uh, I, he, I, at one point or another, he says oh. in this, uh, on this tape, uh, oh, what was it? Something like, "Hey, baby, it's only pee." <laughs> oh, he pooped on. Or, or something. it's only shit. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he's he was like, like uh, the R. R. Kelly of the fifties. <laughs> yeah. Well, he spent time in jail, you know. Oh yeah. For taking a woman across state lines for immoral yeah. purposes, that was against the law in those days. Um. Chuck was a, a weird guy. Chuck, uh, the story I heard about Chuck, and it's getting late. That's why I'm getting a little vague about stuff. Uh, but the one thing I heard about Chuck was is that anytime he would play somewhere, he would demand because this is just being black and in the South and uh, 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 just the way that black artists were treated in those days. He always wanted his money up front. And when he went on stage, he sang, and it was in his back pocket, you know. Uh, and he did that yeah. consistently. Uh, so, I mean, he, uh, but, I mean, I think he's one of the greatest, greatest lyricists of all time. He certainly is the man who invented rock and roll. Although he's not credited with having the first rock and roll record, but he certainly popularized rock and roll. Uh, and... Um, do you know what the first rock and roll record ever was? I'd know it if I heard it, but I can't think of it. No, you wouldn't know it if you heard it. Was it an Elvis Presley? Nope. Nope. No. Nope. Big Mama something? Some nope. woman, right? Nope. Nope. The first actual rock and roll record. Okay. 
was so caveman did it. He pushed no, the rock. I'll, and he I'll tell you. I'll tell you who did it. It'll surprise you. Ike Turner. Huh. Oh, really? And it was called Rocket Eighty Eight. Oh, oh yeah, that's the Oldsmobile. I that now. No, it's not the Oldsmobile. So, it was yeah, called. Yeah, it's a car. But Rocket I know it was a car. But the song was called Rocket Eighty Eight. Yeah. Who knows if they didn't name the car after the song? You know. Probably. But no, Ike Turner. Is, the, is literally the guy credited I, with the first the rock and roll record. That did that song, though. Yeah, he did. I would have thought it was Chuck Berry, actually, but I don't know. No, it was, it was Ike Turner. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. So, uh, a little, 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 little rock and roll history for you. We're also coming up on the... Um, the anniversary of Woodstock. You know, it's funny. There are nothing but these 50th anniversaries happening this year that make me feel older and older and older. Because I was at Woodstock, you know. And and um, there's a great October. There's going to be a real tough 50th anniversary for me. What? What do you mean? Are oh, you going to be 50? Yes. Oh well. Uh, fuck you. Oh, a mere baby. Yeah, they're having. You look, you look a lot older, Dan. Uh, what? Monterey Jazz. Festival. You look a lot older. Yeah. Was the Mon uh, I mean, Monterey Jazz Festival happened fifty years ago? Yep. Yeah. Oh wow. Jeez. Jim Marshall took those pictures too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, uh, he said that the shot that he took of Jimi Hendrix lighting his guitar on fire, Hendrix said to him uh, that, "Why? Get ready. I'm going to do something." And and be ready, and that's when he said it. He got the uh, yeah. stuff and set his guitar on fire. By the way, there was a there was a they did a little tribute to Woodstock on uh, CBS Sunday Morning last week, mm -hmm. and they had a couple who were there, and they have the couple reminiscing about having been there and so on and so forth. And at the end of the of the uh, piece that they did, they revealed who these two people were. They're still married to each other and so on. They're the couple on the album, on the Woodstock album. She has like a, a blanket on her and they're hugging. And it was these, these two people. And they got, they, I th they either were married at the time or they got married at the time. And uh, uh, they're still married. And That's uh, a heartwarming story. That's a, you know the heartwarming story I heard today? This one I loved. Um, there was a... A guy who they found his body in Vietnam. He was a, 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 a jet fighter pilot, and the plane crashed in North Vietnam. And uh, the the bones, I guess, had been there for well ever since the Vietnam War. And uh, they brought the, the 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 brought them back home. I, I see your hand up there. We'll go to you in a second, Charlie. Sometimes I can't see it because everything's so small here. Um, and his, uh, uh, the, the Air Force flew him back to Texas, I think, where his, his home was, to be interred there. And the pilot of the Air Force plane was his son. Isn't that a wow. nice story? That's a really nice oh, story. Wow, yes, that... yes, Charlie. Well, if we're going to talk about 50th anniversaries, you got to remember the Miracle Mets. Oh, yeah. I was 69. wrong on the Monterey Jazz Festival. Well, I was wrong on that. There were I was talking about the uh, the one with Jimi Hendrix was about fifty years ago, but they're actually from since fifty eight is when they they started theirs. But they were talking about I think it was last year was the fiftieth year since the Hendrix thing. Yeah. Sixty nine. Yeah. Maybe it was last year. year was also the uh the Woodstock uh Thing, wasn't it? No, that's yeah. this, that that's 69. coming that's this year. It's, it's coming up on the on the. Oh well, no, it was the summer of love or something like the that. The sixteenth. Like, yeah, what, what, that's what it was. It was it's the I, summer of love. I, thing. I believe Lock Woodstock yeah. is celebrated. It's the twentieth of this month. It'll be yeah. fifty years. Yeah. yeah. I thought the jazz festival was older than that. I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, uh, Dan. I was just gonna take it back to what uh, Charlie was saying. When did the Mets start? It was only like 62 or 63, wasn't it? I think 60, 61, I, I think, for 61. I thought it was the Brooklyn Dodgers, right? Yeah, because the uh, Chase uh, moved out to L.A., yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty quick from 60s. You know, new teams, you don't think they're going to get to the 
World Series so quick. But here was the problem with the Miracle Mets. You know, when they started the Mets, uh, they started because the Dodgers obviously left New York City. And the reason the Dodgers, when the Dodgers left New York City, so did the Giants. And the reason, that, you know why the Giants left, right, Tony? Uh, that I don't know. I forgot why they left. They were paid. Francisco. They were paid by the Dodgers to go to San Francisco, so they wouldn't oh, be the I, only I, ones I, on the West Coast alone. Because oh, oh. you remember, there were three teams here in New York City. Yeah. Uh, and, and so they started. What was the third team? They, they, the third team. <laughs> there were the Dodgers. There were the Giants, and there were the uh, there was the Yankees. Ah. Oh. When uh, somebody had to yeah, fill Rob up, would know that somebody had to fill up Chavez Ravine, so they created the Mets, <laughs> and the Mets, the Mets the Mets were the worst team in the history of baseball years, practically yeah, in absolutely. the beginning, so bad that Joe Garagiola was famous for saying the great thing about going to a Mets game is is the excitement of knowing that when a ball goes up, who's not going to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and but, when, but, but uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. But they, yeah. but they played. Be, they were so terrible. They played to sell out crowds, and the reason they had sell out crowds is everybody, nobody wanted to root for the Yankees because the Yankees always won. Yeah, but here was good. this team they could go out for these underdogs and root for them. And the minute that year came and they won the pennant, their attendance went down by fifty percent. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, they were like lovable losers, like the yeah. Chicago Cubs were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I went uh, to day camp. You know what team folded for them to win that pennant? Baltimore, the Chicago Cubs. Ah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 When I went to day camp. Uh, I was pr I was pretty young, and the uh, they used to have a thing called. You would have color to wars. be pretty young to go to day camp, Phil. Yeah, yeah. And, and, so, and they they had these the they, color wars, and one team would be the Yankees, and the other team would be the Mets, and all the loser kids were on the Mets, and so I was always on the Mets team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean that 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 uh, you know that, but I mean. Um, it just seems like everything is 50th anniversary now. Yes. I'm going. Yeah. And the man on the man on the moon. 69 is a real seminal year then. 19, well, it is a, it is a very seminal year. I mean, we've got we've got a lot of things both culturally did Kennedy, and did kill and two Alex Bobby Kennedy died that year. 68. 68. Kennedy is still Bobby. 68. Yeah, he, was, he was 68. Yeah. And then and, and, uh, Martin Luther King was 68 too, right? Yep. Yeah. 68, yeah. yeah. April 68. I, 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 think, I think Bobby died a couple of months after Martin Luther King, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because Bobby, uh, he when Martin Luther King died, he was the one who told the people of, of wherever he was. I don't remember. Now, here's a headline story. The headline seems to be very funny. And you want to read on because you want to figure out what this is about. But the headline reads, Wayne Newton hit with lawsuit over monkey bite. Monkey bite? Monkey bite. I figured he, like, gave a woman a hickey and she decided to sue him, right? That's what I would think no, the story was. No, didn't he was. have pets or uh, some sort of... Well, he's being sued by a Las Vegas woman who claims the veteran crooner's pet monkey bit and injured her daughter during an invited visit to Newton's showpiece mansion nearly two <laughs> years ago. She seeks $15,000 in damages. Hell, if I, were, if I were Wayne, I would just dig into my pocket and peel it yeah. off, you know. Yeah. <laughs> On behalf yeah. of her daughter, in a civil negligence complaint filed Wednesday in Nevada State Court, the suit, which does not describe the nature of the alleged industries, uh, injuries, rather, claims the monkey attacked Genevieve without provocation during the tour of the singer's former estate known as Casa de Shenandoah. Um, Maybe it's time people stop letting their children go to the mansions of famous singers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you're yes. absolutely Space right. Yeah, that's a little weird. For, uh, Michael, what's his name? But, but, uh, no, you're absolutely right, Josh. There was another guy yeah. I used to know years ago. <laughs> Uh, from and it was because he used to play the Cork Club in Dallas. I mean, in in Houston, and I got to know he and his brother quite well. It was his Wayne and his brother, uh, the Newton brothers, they were known as. And uh, Wayne had just had this hit called Dunkashane, 
And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that, that was some of my early life too. God, all the people I've known have done better than I have. God, they've always. <laughs> uh, he was on the uh, Lucy Show a lot. She used to uh, feature. Oh yeah, the, yeah, really? yeah. In his day, he was he was he was he was quite a performer in his day. Yeah, I mean, he did. He would come on stage and do everything, and then dare you to not think he was great. You know, he he played the banjo, and then he'd play the flute, and then he played the trombone, and then he'd sing, and then he'd dance, and I mean, he was the consummate performer. He was amazing. You know that medley he did? Uh, They're coming to take me away. Ha ha, donka, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> And then he'd pull out his monkey and spank it. <laughs> you know, there's just Thanks. something there's something about you and that song, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um I, I who who uh, Napoleon Napoleon the fourteenth. Napoleon the fourteenth was a he's actually still alive. He's a uh, pro, uh record promo guy from Philadelphia. Yeah. I forgot his name. Yeah. Yeah, um, awesome. then he just uh, just you know he did the he did the record in the album. That yeah. was a big song. That was a yeah. big yeah. record. You know that was yeah. not no small thing. Uh, but wasn't that his only hit? Huh? Yeah, yeah, it was his only one. <laughs> oh, that was his only hit. Absolutely, it was his only hit. Um, yeah, there was no follow up to that. What, what do they do with the album? Uh, what do they put on the album, for Christ's sake? Uh, I remember some of the songs. Uh, oh, really? You know, I, I live in a split-level head. Uh, and uh, let's see, there was a, a, a few others. Um, uh, it, it'll come to me. I could second. never figure out why that record was a hit. No. It was so different. You know, uh, but but you had it's idiots so stuff like it Ray was Stevens. So, it, and, it, it was... Uh, well, Ray Stevens. He had a radio show too. Monster Mash. Well, yeah, like Ray it. Stevens. Ray Stevens wrote some pretty good stuff, though. You know. Yeah. Um, they uh, were were they parodies? Uh, Ray Stevens? No, stuff were not parodies. Uh, comedy. A Ahab the Arab and things uh, like yeah. that. You know. Well, anyway, stuff like that was uh, was popular. They were called novelty songs. Some of the most yeah. well, most of them were in parodies, but they were called novelty. Doctor yeah, Namanta. Yeah, we don't uh, seem. He came after. We don't seem to have any uh, any of those anymore, you know. But um, you know, yeah, you know, no, it's it's uh, ever, spank, spank the bitch, the spank the bitch, and uh, you know, uh, suck the dick and all that stuff. That's all you hear on the uh, on music nowadays, you know. Uh, yeah, in the gas station when they're filling up their cars and the and the license plate is vibrating. <laughs> fucking bitch, fucking bitch, fucking bitch, boom, 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 boom. No way, bitch, I, I, I miss, I remember, and this tells me I'm getting older. I missed it because it used to be that hip hop, I get all the the boom, 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 boom. Now when I'm driving around, it's all this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, there's Anybody? a yeah. there's our there's our little theme song going off there. Oh, hi hat. You realize we've gone through this whole time and haven't mentioned the name the T word one time tonight. Tomorrow, we that's a good thing. He was giving oh, a big huh? Yeah, it's an old Trump zone. Now you see, you had to say the word. So you ruined it, Phil. You had to say the word. You ruined it. We could have gone the whole fucking two hours Trump, without the Trump, word Trump. 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 Tomorrow is another day for him. Yeah, oh boy. Anyway, hey, listen, I want all of you to do what we always have you do, and that is give a big wave goodbye to the audience out. Oh, you're doing that, right, uh, Patrick? Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, uh, whatever your name is from Queens. Um, Tony. <laughs> That's it for tonight. Wave goodbye, everybody. Do that, do that thing, yeah, do that little thing you do. And, uh, hey, this kind of looks okay, doesn't it? Huh? You like that? Huh? That, that kind of works. It works for me, I guess. I don't know if it works for you. Thanks to our citizen panel for being with us as I unceremoniously hang up on them. And uh, I want you to stay tuned next for Jack Bishop. He's going to be here with a little program called The Intersection. Call him, will you? Okay. 
And then uh, tomorrow night at 9.30, of course, it's uh, Damien Chaplin and it's The Exchange. And then tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life, it'll be me, Alex Bennett, saying, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>